Hi guys, this is Structures Explained and in this video we will be talking about torsion as a force and how it acts. In daily life we experience many instances where we apply torsion to the objects. Opening a door lock is one such moment in which we rotate the key along its main axis to open the lock. The force, also called as torque, is the main player in this scenario. Next we look at wrenching of clothes to remove water from them. The force at both the ends is applied in opposite direction to twist the cloth resulting in draining of water. These examples show torsion in action in daily life. Structural elements in a building or a bridge also undergo this force all the time. Let's consider a rectangular concrete beam fixed at one end and applied with a moment or torque along the main axis of the beam at other end. The fixed end will resist the rotation but the free end will rotate creating stresses in the cross section of the beam. From this illustration, we can say that torsion is a vertical movement acting on the main axis of the beam, creating shear stresses in it. Torsion is expressed in either Pascal, an SI unit for newtons per square meter or in pounds per square inch, while torque is expressed in newton meters or foot-pound force. When the beam is revolved around it, its axis, there will be friction between adjacent sections along the beam and the sections will try to resist the rotation. This will produce stresses in the cross section of the beam, which will be radially increasing from center to the periphery of the section. Highest stress will be on the outermost portion of the beam and least in the center. This stress will cause concrete beam to produce cracks in it, which will occur at an angle of 45 degrees from the cross section of the beam. To resist these stresses, a combination of vertical and longitudinal reinforcement will be required to arrest the cracks. The longitudinal reinforcement in top and bottom, shown here in blue, run along the beam and the vertical reinforcement, also called as stirrups, shown in red, are distributed in whole beam. For beams in torsion, stirrups must be closed and having an angle of 135 degree hooks. Sidebars are also provided for resisting torsion if needed by design which are shown here in orange. The combined action of this reinforcement and internal resistance of the concrete counter the torsion forces and cracks produced in the beam. Now let us see various scenarios in a concrete frame structure where beams are subject to torsion. The model here represents a three-story reinforced concrete frame structure with normal slab, beam, column and footing arrangement. Let's see the building members in various colors for better understanding. So in this 3D view, we can see orange colored isolated footings, gray colored columns, red colored beams and green colored slabs. First come the perimeter beams of a building which run all around the building. These beams are loaded only from one side and hence are subject to torsional forces. The beams which are curved in plan are also acted by torsional forces. Then comes beams which are near openings or cutouts in the slab. These beams are also loaded from one side and hence attract the torsional forces. Third kind of beams which get torsion forces are the primary beams which support secondary beams resting on them. These beams are main contenders to get the torsional reinforcement due to the loading from one side. Needless to say, these beams require thorough analysis for their design to resist various forces acting on them. Torsional forces will also be applicable in whole building when acted by an earthquake. When the center of rigidity and center of mass of the building does not match with each other, eccentric forces will develop twisting the whole building. That's it for this video guys, hope you learned something from it. Like, share and subscribe for more content like this and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we upload a new video. See you in the next one.